I want to share a couple of quotes about left neglected. From Laurie Higgins of the Cape Cod Times, even though left neglected explores some weighty issues, at its heart it is an incredibly compelling story about a woman who is forced to embrace a simpler life and in doing so discovers the members of her family and parts of herself she didn't even realize she was neglecting when she was healthy and racing through her days so quickly that she could barely breathe. It sounds familiar. <laughs> it's a cautionary tale that is ripe for our times and will resonate with readers who wonder at the craziness of their own busy lives. And from author Jody Colt, remember how you couldn't put down Still Alice? Well, clear your schedule because you're going to feel the same. <laughs> is thrilled for your successes. So let's raise a glass to Lisa. We love you dear. <laughs> um, thank you Joanne so much. I love having the store in Chatham. I feel so lucky to have you here. Um, when I walked in on publication day two days ago and saw this table in the middle of the store, Joni was here. I screamed. <laughs> oh my god, I can't um, so I'm very lucky to have you. Thank you. Um, so Left Neglected, I had the idea for this book years ago. Actually, when I first started writing Still Alice, I knew that if I got to write another book that I wanted to write about someone with left neglect. It was unlike Alzheimer's, which all of us have heard of or maybe know someone who has, has it. Most of us probably haven't heard of left neglect or unilateral neglect or hemispatial neglect. I mean, even the names of the condition don't sound like anything you've ever heard of. But I would, the reason I even know it existed is because I would come across it periodically when I was a student in neuroscience back in my student days in my early 20s. The first time I heard about it was actually in um, a book by Oliver Sacks. Um, he's, I don't know if some of you are familiar with him, the man who mistook his wife for a hat, a lot of you are nodding. Some of you may have seen the movie um, Awakenings with Robert De Niro and Robin Williams. So he's a neurologist who writes about interesting patients that he's seen over the years. And one of the stories was a three-page story about a man who every night would feel this disembodied corpse leg in bed with him. And he, he was in the hospital, and he thought one of the nurses was playing a trick on him, sticking a leg from the corpse in his bed with him every night. And so he, ugh, disgusting, there's a corpse leg in bed. He'd grab it and throw it out, and of course, it's his leg. He has left side neglect, isn't aware of his left leg, thinks it's someone else's, and he goes out of bed with it, and so he falls out of bed every night. And that was the end of the story. And I thought, but wait, what else... How does this man live? What else goes on with him? I was curious to know more. And I would keep sort of seeing these little snippets of <coughs> stories of someone with neglect. So, and they were always in the doctor's office. So it was a story about someone who was asked to draw a clock and would only draw the numbers one through six and think that the entire clock was there. And again, the same questions. Well, how does this person manage in their day-to-day -day life? How do they get dressed? How do they drive? Do they, how do they eat the food on the left side of their plate? Are they in a relationship? How do they hold their wife's hand? <coughs> what, what, what goes on? So I knew I wanted to write this story, but I didn't quite know what the circumstances around this story might be. Like, who's the character who has it? What's the theme of this book? Because I didn't want to just write a clinical story, like Still Alice. It's about Alzheimer's, but it's about a woman with Alzheimer's and her life. So what it, I needed to find a story. Left-side um, neglect is um, when you sustain an injury to the right side of your brain, either as a result of a stroke, a hemorrhage, or a traumatic brain injury. You are no longer able to pay attention to anything on the left, the left side of anything. It can be Different people have it to different degrees, but you don't, aren't aware of, the, of your left arm and may not even believe that it truly belongs to you. You don't. Um, you only eat food from the right side of your plate and think you've finished your meal. Um, if you're a woman, you put makeup on the right side of your face and think you're done. Um, so, so it's this clinical pathological inattention. Um, then I thought about all of the things we, quote, normal people don't pay attention to every day. Um, I think about all the demands put on us to get so much done every minute of the day. I, you, I, you're texting or emailing or returning calls or you're driving to pick someone up or drop something off and you're, you're squeezing every ounce of every second out of the day. 
Well, what are we missing when we're not paying attention to any one thing at any given time? When your attention is spread that thin, what are we losing out on? Um, so this idea that here's a clinical condition that seems so bizarre to us. Wow, you're missing the left side of everything. How do you walk through the world like that? Well, I, I wanted to sort of think about, well, how do we walk through the world not paying attention to all the things we're not paying attention to? Are we, you know, are we ignoring the exercise equipment in our house because, you know, who wants to bother to take off the last 10 pounds? Or how do you take it? Can you start a book? You know, do you know where the character is going to go? How do you do? You have it all thought out at the beginning, or do you start writing and, and you discover along the way? Or? Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of both. Like, I know that she's going to. I knew that this character was going to be a busy person, multitasking a lot, and that it would be sort of extreme. And I knew that she would cause her own accident um, by not paying attention. And I knew that. Um, she would end up with neglect and that she wouldn't fully recover, most likely. Um, but I was open to that happening. So I mostly leave it open to discovery, which is really fun and incredibly scary. Because you sit down to write the next chapter and you, I did many times get overwhelmed with incredible fear of, oh my god, I don't know what they're going to do next. Um, what if they don't do anything interesting? Um, so yeah, I let it unfold. I it, you know, I, I'm not trained as a writer, and I've been reading a lot about writing over the last several years. And Stephen King describes it, how it feels for me, too. But she describes it as um, driving at night with no moon, no street lamps, and your headlights on. You can only see so far in front of you and not beyond. But as long as you trust that you can see what's in front of you, you'll get to where you need to go. Yeah, I like that. That's how it feels for me. Thank you.